Okay, so we talked about this the other day, you and I, as part of our pre-prep, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if it was you that brought it up, or I think you brought it up. You brought something up like, "Will we ever land on Mars?" And I yes. said, "Well, I don't oh, yeah, know." Right. But but then but then I said we started talking about the moon landing, and I said that my wife is a a vehement denier that. Um, that the U.S. ever landed on the moon. Like, ever landed or ever. landed when it yeah, really? No, wow. ever. Okay. She doesn't think that any man has stepped foot on the moon from any <laughs> country in the world. Now, um, the reason why is because we had... Okay, and so she... We were flipping through uh, TV or whatever, and she's, you know we noticed this uh, documentary on the conspiracy theories about the U.S. landing on the moon. And I was taking the position of, no, no, they they totally landed on the moon, but I can understand why some people would think that they didn't. And she was taking the position of, no, they didn't. You're crazy for thinking that. And I said, okay, fine, let's watch this documentary on the conspiracies behind the people that think that no one landed on the moon. And I went into it with a closed mind. I was like, there's no way. Like, this is all, like, stupid conspiracy theorists, right? You went into it, you mean you're saying you went into it with a uh, a closed mind that there's no way you would entertain the fact this was a conspiracy? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I thought that they had. Yeah, so you are you weren't going into it with a closed mind of that it was possible. You were... You were you were going to get right. You were refusing to believe even for a second that there this could be a conspiracy. Theory. Yeah, that was where you were going. That's with right. This. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, as I begin watching this uh, this documentary, they start pointing out all these really important pieces. Like for instance, shadows that weren't there. Um, yeah. Shadows that were there, but the sun was in a different position and should have been casting a shadow the opposite way or from a different yes. angle. Yep. Um, lighting where someone was standing where they were completely illuminated but should have been completely shrouded in shadow, you know, things like that. Um, pictures yep. of, you know, one day something is here and then, you know, they say this is on a completely different area of the moon and it's the exact same landscape. Um, there are all kinds of things. And when you yes. when they show you this stuff, you're kind of going... And I, keep in mind, I walked into this not wanting to believe any of it. Like, I had no interest in entertaining this. And when I finished, when that when that show had finished, when that documentary had finished, I kind of walked out of that going, huh, interesting. So now I've kind of done an about face. And I don't think they did. I'm not sure that they ever hmm. did land on the moon. Really? There, there really? Are, if there were one or two things that would make you question it, you'd be like, mm, eh, maybe, yeah. But this was like 10, 12, 15 things that you just kind of, and it was just, they piled it on. And I thought to myself, hmm, yeah, a lot of this makes sense. It's interesting because uh, after the conversation, I th- I knew we were going to talk about it, so I did a little bit of digging around, and I will say that in the initial phases of this, the, the way I found out about it was a book about conspiracy theories. Right. Yeah, I actually never, it, yeah. I never knew that this was even possible that, that this was ever debated as a conspiracy theory. I don't think I knew until like maybe five or six years ago. And that's generational. I mean, when I mentioned it to my father, he said, oh, yeah, there was lots of controversy and there were a lot of people trying to say it was a conspiracy theory. So he grew up, and at that time, he was probably 20 years old or so when they landed on the moon. So he was, you know, not a kid and he wasn't, you know, he was at that at a time he could easily follow the story. And But he did say, yeah, there were, there were conspiracies around it. So it was no surprise to him. It was something that people did talk about. For me, I had no idea. And when I first read, this is actually a conspiracy theory? Wow. Right. Now, using a studio to mock up the, the landing. And, and um, so there's actually a Mythbusters episode that it's episode 104 called NASA Moon Landing. And so these Mythbusters guys... In 2008, you know the show Mythbusters? Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. So they they took 
a number of the statements that were, first of all, I went, I've kind of, I went from perhaps no way I would ever entertain the fact that somebody landed on the moon not happening or that it was faked. Uh, I I would have, like I said, not even entertained it myself. So you and, and I then, came from the same position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We full on believed that it was, that they landed on the moon. You you went from no way, but after a discussion with or seeing this documentary, you you now have doubts. Yes. So I looked at MythBusters because I also had doubts, and I decided I'm I'm going to look a little bit at what MythBusters had to say. So you you're right. There are a number of things like shadows. Uh, one myth statement is one of the NASA photos is fake because the shadows of the rocks and lunar lander are not parallel. Right. One of the NASA photos is fake because Buzz Aldrin can be clearly seen while in the shadow of the lunar lander. Yes, yes. Now, the Mythbusters guys, to test this, they t- the they built a, a large scale, uh, one to six ratio replica. They say a much larger scale. Okay, so one to six replica of the landing site, including a dust surface with a color and albedo, similar to lunar soil. The Mythbusters then took a photograph which was nearly identical to the original NASA photo from Apollo 11. The Mythbusters explained that the astronaut was visible because of light being reflected off the moon's surface. So that that was one of yours, and they claim to have busted it. Um, the other one that I hear a lot was f- myth statement as follows. Footage of the American flag planted on the moon shows it flapping. Yes. And a flag cannot flap in a vacuum, so it could not have been filmed on the moon. So the team, the Mythbusters guys, they placed a replica of the American flag that was planted on the moon into the into a vacuum chamber. They manipulated the flag in a manner similar to what the astronauts did when they planted the flag on the moon, then stopped the manipulation. The first test, they first tested it at normal pressure. Uh, the momentum moved the flag around somewhat, but quickly dissipated. In pure vacuum conditions, so I'm assuming this is the moon, after the manipulation stopped, the momentum caused the flag to flap wildly as if it were being blown by a breeze. This is because there was no resistance from air to dampen the motion. This proved that in a vacuum, a flag does not need wind to flap for a while after a person sets it in motion. Okay, so now I had originally thought, I came up with that on my own, right? Um, you do you, Did you build the, the chamber and everything? <laughs> no, like, I didn't build the chamber. I came up with that in my head. I thought okay. that seems reasonable. Like you're in a vacuum. Um, there is n- very little gravity, so that would contribute to the flag standing f- like flat out rather than falling yeah. down, right? Um, yeah. And so I kind of thought, well, it was flapping because of the movement of them planting the flag and there was that little flap. So right. I don't know. Yeah. I, that one I can I can buy, but well, go through this uh, thing. You'll see. Maybe maybe on the next episode we can check in again and see how you feel about this. Okay, but let me ask you this: Did MythBusters actually bust these myths, or did they just were you know did some did a couple of guys in some black trucks pull up and say, "This is how this is going to play out. <laughs> You're going to bust these wow. myths." That's and, a real con- <laughs> that that's a hell of a conspiracy theory in in general because you are now then and this is why I I just don't think the conspiracy theory holds up because how could so many people and I think this is as common in a lot of conspiracy theories how could you possibly keep this a secret. conspiracy theory a secret for this long right there's just Somebody too many people that had a, a, a you know an a bone to pick or or wanted to set the record straight that could have come that should have and could have come out of the woodwork um that would have it just to me it would be impossible for for this to be a conspiracy theory they do say in here that the the conspiracy theories can vary in general in the general sense that not 
all of the landings were real, that there were some were faked, and that the the first one I think they say was fake because they wanted to be the say, to be able to say they were the first to right. get there. Yes, but but you know what really gets me on not conspiracy theories, but I still find it fascinating that. When did this happen? When was the first lunar lunar landing? Sixty four? No, sixty eight. Yeah, it was late sixty eight, sixty nine. That think about the world of technology. I mean, you had you had rotary phones. You had yes, there were computers that not used by anyone, like not in a personal computer sense, but. Even in the office, they weren't really used by by workers, but there were there were certainly computers. But when you think, man, how did they? I, I mean, the most fascinating thing to me wasn't so much getting there; it's that they got back. Well, there's a whole bunch of conspiracy surrounding that, both the landing and leaving the moon. First yeah. of all, when they landed, there was no crater because that thing would have had to shoot rockets off in order to stabilize itself in order to land. But there was no, and the moon is full of dust, right? So there was no, no dust blowing around, no crater underneath, and it was a certain amount of pounds per you know square inch that it would have been blasting underneath it. And I'm not a scientist; I can't talk like a scientist, so I don't really know what I'm saying here, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I know that they say that there was no crater underneath. And the same is true for when it left. When it when it left the planet, it showed the um uh it showed the capsule taking off, but it didn't show very much in the way of rockets pushing the capsule away from what it was sitting on, the stand, if mm-hmm, you call it mm-hmm, that. I don't know what you mm-hmm. call it, but so I don't know. I mean I'm sure you can pick apart anything, but sure. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, this this page is quite interesting. If you, if I'm gonna you look check at it, it out. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look at it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, as far as the lunar landing goes, um, yeah, I uh, I've done an about face, and I think that maybe it was faked, okay. and uh, I don't think I would I wouldn't have considered that until about two or three weeks ago. All right. Well, let's re let's revisit this one. Maybe do a little bit more after, research after I've looked at it. Yeah, <laughs> after I've looked at the MythBuster page, let's catch up on this one again and see if you change your your thought thinking. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Eric's playing this NHL 2019 game he got for Christmas, and there's a career mode. Yes. And. And, and um, you can set up your player. Mark's got it. Yeah. So we had a little catch up call with Grandpa this morning, and and as I was there, your dad or my or? dad, my dad, and and Eric came into the picture, and he 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 wanted to update his grandpa on life or whatever. And he says, "Oh yeah, I just got drafted to the NHL. I was I was playing for the Oshawa Generals, and then I got drafted by the Buffalo Sabers." And my dad gets into a whole conversation about Tim Horton and then how right. he was played yep. for Buffalo and that and then there's Tim Horton Donuts and then then my son was like, Oh yeah, I couldn't choose who drafted me. I was playing for the generals and I could choose that, but then I got drafted by the the Buffalo Sabres and and I'm listening to him describe this. And then my dad throws something in like, Well, you know, your cousin just got a his fifth goal of the season yesterday. And, you know, they were going back and forth. And I'm like, hold on a second here. One is reality and one <laughs> what is, complete is fantasy, virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. But yet they were both being spoken with the same amount of seriousness and almost being accepted with the same amount of seriousness. I love it. That's so good. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> that's not real. He knows that, though. Come he on. does, but it's it th- is that I guess that's virtual reality, and you know, not yeah. with the goggles sense, but it's actually pretty interesting. Like you can actually you sit on the bench as the player, yeah, and you look out at the, at the place. So if you get put in the penalty box, you see the view from the penalty box, 
Right. It's actually pretty, pretty cool, I got to say. I mean, if they had this when we were kids, man. What I read was belts must be one of the dirtiest articles of clothing we wear on a daily basis. They're the first thing we touch after using the toilet, and they're very rarely, if ever, washed. Oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, Mike mentioned this uh, to me one about a year ago, because I had read once a, a statement, what is the dirtiest thing in, the, in your home? And the answer was the cell phone. Ah, for sure. Absolutely. And, yeah, I mean, up, you, it's up there. Yeah, and you know people use them in the bathroom. So, uh, but mm-hmm. Mike, that's when Mike said, "Yes, it probably is." But the belt, as you just said, because nobody washes their hands, they always use it to. Well, you do your buckle pants up. up first, yeah, yeah, and then you don't wash. When's the last time you washed your belt? Never, <laughs> ever. I've never. I do it washed. daily now. Yeah. I wash my belt along with my hands. Uh, I wash it regularly. You do not. You do not. <laughs> um, here's another one for you. Dunder Mifflin is probably the most popular fictional paper company. Yeah. People probably don't even know that it's fictional. I actually have Dunder Mifflin paper. I'm not making this up. How? Um, it was put out by... Um, an, uh, I don't know if... It wasn't Staples, but a a paper company. Um, maybe it was Quebec or whatever. I don't know. And they, they, mm-hmm. they had like a special edition paper. I have like three, 500 packs of it. It's, this is like a joke no, thing. Though, well, yeah, or? it was, it was, it was their attempt at being silly or funny or, you know, like, but yeah, I'll, I don't have it close by, but next time I, um, if I can think of it, I'll try to bring one to our next podcast and I'll show it to you. It's hilarious. Thunder Mifflin. Yeah. It's like the red stapler in the movie The Office. They sold st- the business supply, some business supplies, supply store sold the red stapler that you see in The Office. Mm-hmm. The movie, the little red stapler that Milton, and I, and I have, I have oh, one. Office Space. Office Space, sorry, yes, Office Space. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I have one. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to come and work on Saturday. That's such a good movie. (laughs) Cult classic. There are some people though that I've recommended that movie to where they, they don't get it. They don't, they don't know what's funny about it. And they're office people. They work in offices. I'm not sure whether to be concerned about those people (laughs) or whether I'm just, those are, those are people that you should be concerned about. I think so. Yeah. 